Islamism. Hope everybody can hear me out there. I think I need to turn this up. See where, oh no, we're a little loud. You can hear me out there, Molly. I'm Anil Jones Bay. Could you give me a little ring? Could you put a, yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Praise Allah, honor to the Holy Prophet Drew Ali. We're going to get started right now. This is that pre show. So please listen up. Nigga, he look at me with hungry eyes, tries to take me by surprise with his fancy type of conservative dress. Whitey's man is at their best. Honey, what's this black world coming to? This matter of fact, middle class black bourgeoisie ass wish I was rich class nigga. Mm -hmm. Honey, they I'm a black man. I'm pimp. All the twinkle young hip brothers dig me. I'm their symbol. I'm real. With me, they can relate and associate. You see, I came from those same shabby shack. Well, same fucking rags on my back. But growing up in a world of dog eat dog, I learned that the dirtiest dog got the home. Meaning not the dog with the loudest bark, but the dog with the coldest heart. Oh, I became the North Pole. Cold, 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 cold. My blood is like ice water in my veins, which the engine of my heart keeps pushing from the deep freeze of my brain. I take whole money and feel no pain. No pain. Like white men do. On the white men feel nipples and lanes. That's where I got the idea for the game. Bum cold, that's what it is. But not that lame shit like the white boys play because once I start playing the game, I improved it right away. You see, I wear a hundred dollar front and two hundred dollar slides. And the hog is the only thing in which I ride. You niggas can't get that big to ride. I have two or three grains in my pocket every day. Hose, dough, cocaine is the name of the game I play. But you know, folks tell me that if I applied my ability in another way, ain't no telling where I would be today. Because I'm so damn keen. White girls melt like butter when they look into the spring. Ten face for mine. Black girls, well, they know I'm fine. Keen and mean and don't give a damn. But I know the truth. If I had a mouth, I wouldn't be a damn bit brother. I'll just be fooling myself and setting up my brother. I'll still be unhappy because I'm black. 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 I want freedom, freedom, freedom now. Now. But oh, you better watch out for me because I'm a black man, a time bomb destined to explode. But you can't tell where I'm coming from. And the next time it's still buying a Cadillac, I'm gonna buy myself a gun. A, gun. a man searches for the key to success. He breaks the visual, then make a walk. He knows how to love, he knows how to hate, he knows how to lose. He knows just when to play. What is a man? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, Richard. What is a man? Honey, what's this black world coming? This matter of fact, middle class black bourgeoisie ass wish I was rich class nigga. Mm. Honey, listen. I'm a black man. I'm All the swinging young hip brothers dig me. I'm their symbol. I'm real. But me, they can relate and associate. Hey, hey. You see, I came from those same shabby shack. Well, same fucking rags on 
Turn it down. I'm growing up in a world of dog eat dog I love. Islamism. Praise Allah, honors to the Holy Prophet Drew Ali. We're going to try something new this evening. Um, trying to give you a visual here, okay, of a few things. So, um, praise Allah. Let us uh, situate. Let me get situated here. You know, uh, the, uh, the um, adept uh, line is open for all those who would like to participate on that particular part. So uh, praise Allah to see everybody. Let's do a little roll call here. Praise Allah for Brother Amin L. Jones Bay. Well, first and foremost, praise Allah and honor to the Holy Prophet Noble Jewel. Um, let us open up in prayer. Okay, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So um, if everybody will take a deep breath. <sighs> let it out. Islamism, please raise your wings up high. Repeat after me the Moorish American prayer. Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day. Who is holy prophet? Drew Ali. Amin. Islam. Praise Allah. I'm the holy prophet, Drew Ali. All right. Once again, I'm going to move this up a little bit closer here. Uh, I'm doing my best, you know, to try to give you a little visual. And uh, you know, I'll end up the exact round. All right, so um, we are today's lecture is obviously a uh, continuing on the Prophet Noble Juali. You know, I styled it uh, Prophet Juali and the Emperor. Okay, we're going to uh, look at that, right, and get uh, a good understanding of that as we continue to move through the chapter. We're going to be on page number 43 in the student manual number one. So please pick that up. Uh, let us, am I going to have to, I don't have to split that screen, praise Allah. So, um, yeah, we're going to be on student manual number one, um, this page 43. I think this is where we left off when we were dealing with the prophet number Jerusalem. Okay, um, just an opening where we were before, just a quick brief. We went through the uh, Holy Quran of Muhammad. And we're uh, going through, I believe it was Sure 14.4, right? Uh, last week, or the last lecture was on the Harbinger, uh, Marcus Garvey. Okay, you can go watch that on the private part. I'm going to save that for a little bit later because I want to uh, kind of finish through and then revisit Garvey. But um, Prophet Noble Drew Ali can be found in, um, as a prophet, can be found in Sure 14.4. Okay, we went over that, why we kind of went through the Holy Quran. So once we get a foundation that um, the prophet of the Jewelry truly is a prophet. Now we're going to see some of his great work, right? Look at some of the pictures and uh, decipher, you know, the hieroglyphics. And I hope I've done a good enough job. I just found out, too, uh, by a good brother that I could have done a different thing to share the whole screen. And I'll probably have that for you um, next week. Okay, so... Uh, for all those who want to call in on that, on that line, those who are at that, please do so. All right, so let me configure this. And it may take a quick second here. Um, hold on. All right. You're probably able to see that right now. And, uh, okay. Hold on. Go right. There we go. To go back to the first one. Uh -oh. ah, hold on, everybody. Oh, that was it. That was me, Chuck. Okay, so um, if everybody can see this, I'm going to split my screen so I can see, too, what's going on here. All right. So, no, I'm just going to deal with it. All right, so um, what we're looking at here, I'm going to blow this up, and then I'm just going to communicate, all right, so that you can see and um, get a really good view here. I'm going to blow it up as best I can. So I hope you can see that, you know, because right now I can't really. Um, I'm going to do one thing. Just give me one second. I may be able to do this. All right. 
Okay. And do this. That way, I can um, view. Can everybody see that pretty good out there? Or, or what? Um, or do I need to blow it up for the entire screen? Would that be better? Screen, put one or two better. Put one if you want me, if you can see the whole screen, or two if you want me to blow it all the way up more. All right. Well, all right. So what we're dealing with right here is um, Prophet Nova Drew Ali. Okay. When he came in um, number two. Okay. Number two. All right. So let's do number two here. Let's blow that up. All right. So what we're dealing with, right, is um, Prophet Drew Ali. And he came in 19. This one was around 1913, 1912. Right near the ending of 1912, I do believe it is. And he was, um, as we can see, we can see his professor, Drew, the Egyptian adept student at this time, right? Office hours 10 to 12, and that was in the a.m., right? So I was at 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. or something. Maybe that was 10, yeah, in the a.m. and 6 to 8 p.m. here. So 181 Warren Street, Newark, New Jersey, or as some like to say, New Jerusalem, right? And um, when he came at this time, the reason he came as the Professor Drew, the Egyptian adept student, right? And um, because he just finished, let me show you a picture real quick. Uh-oh, it's the wrong one, everybody. Um, let me show you a picture here. Okay. So, where is that picture? Here he is. All right, so this picture of the prophet in this particular stance, okay, uh, when we're looking at this, let me blow this one up for you. All right, when we're looking at the prophet in this particular stance, right, uh, Ali, right, what you're looking at is him representing the graduate of that Egyptian adept student, okay? And his stance, this particular hand stands here, all these particular things mean something, okay? And, you know, do a little bit of research. The basic things that it means is one who is an ascended master, okay? And you can see the uh, style turban, you know, this was all red, all white, you know, in his white garb. And he actually did this with the red marker. And you can see these things, meaning he's the water before the fire also, right? And you can see him on the on the mat, on the big square, right? And uh, it's very important, okay? So I'm going to pull this down. Did everybody kind of see that? Because I can't see if you saw that. I can, I can no longer really see me right now. So I'm going to keep on going, okay? All right, so when we're dealing with Prophet Nobu Juali, that's where it said the Egyptian adept student you know, this came and then that picture came after. Some say he went to um, uh, to get that one done due to the fact of its uh, importance, right? They say that one was taken at the, uh, um, the Disney Center and they had the most sophisticated forms of um, printing at that time. Now, I, I do believe that, but I believe it was the, the one what they printed let me go over here real quick. Oh, oh, new, 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 new. Oh, Lord, Lord. Oh, no. That's not good. Okay. That's not good. That's not good. All right. So, anyway, this particular uh, one right here, right? Let me go. Let me go here. So I can see if you guys can see. All right. So, this particular one right here, right? God, what did I look like? Then my butt was on you guys' face. Oh, no, that was weird. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, I'm just messing around. So um, seriously, this one right here was a very extremely sophisticated pic. Um, not only was it a picture, but obviously it had stencil in its print job to place a particular picture. Today, it's like nothing. You know, we have all this technology. But back then, it was extremely, um, extremely sophisticated to place a particular picture of a person, right? And place it in a particular print like that. So what we're talking was pretty, uh, the high high forms of technology. And I do believe this is the one where he had to go get it done at the, um, uh, at the Disney Center, 
Okay. So uh, we're going to get back to the picture. Did you guys see that pretty good? Everybody was kind of seeing that. Let me take, I look crazy right there. Let me take that picture down. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, like, what in the world was that? Okay. So, um, all right. Anyway, let's go back to the profit here. All right. So I'm going to go down a little bit on its uh, blowing it up so we can read it. Okay. So we see that he had an office, right? We see he was in Newark and it says here, I am a Muslim. Okay. Hope everybody can see that pretty good. If not, let me blow that up a little bit better. There we go. All right. All right. Can you see it? Let me see it here. Let me look at you. Oh, wow. That doesn't work. All right. So I hope you can really see that. It says, Professor Drew, I am a Muslim. Professor Drew is a man who was born with divine power. He was taught. The adepts he was taught this. Obviously, there's a thing here, but it says the adepts of Egypt. Very important to understand this part, right? The adepts of Egypt. I have the secret of destroying the germs of tuberculosis and cancer of the lungs in 10 to 30 days. Your lungs can and uh, need, can use a very strict examination that the germs are entirely destroyed. Okay, so let's appear it right there. So let's look at this for one moment, right? So Prophet Drew Ali um, uh, was a herbalist. He was, he brought us our first healthcare. As a matter of fact, there was no healthcare for so-called uh, black people, which we know are Asiatics, right? There was no healthcare for Asiatics um, back then. See, when you got sick, you got sick. You know, you better come up with grandma a recipe of, of something, right? So Prophet Abu Ali actually uh, brought back a very high sophisticated science, okay? And it's called pharmacy. Um, when you do the history of pharmacy, he shows and proves on all levels. But when you do the history of a pharmacy, it all started with um, one of the uh, sultan's physicians and he was not only a mathematician, but he was an herbologist and started, uh, God, I'm trying to remember his name. I do believe it's Al Izzin. I mean, not Al Izzin, um, Mans, Al Manuel Mansar or something to this effect. Right. But I'll get that name for you. OK. But the um, um, the Sultan's physician, right, um, actually started what is known as the farm pharmacy today. And in Toledo, right, which was one of the. Um, places in Spain or Andalus that we built and controlled, right? It was a place of not only learning, but it was also a, a place of virology. And this is where we would call today where doctors go study and, and you, know, you know, where you get their degrees, right? So they had this particular study there and uh, uh, Catholics and all these particular people back then would send their priests, you know, to go study, um, and figure out how to cure the diseases because these people were living in um, extreme cases of poverty and uh, a lot of filth. So in um, Spain at that time, when the Moors were uh, ruling their ancient father's land from Carthage, right? Um, they had the most sophisticated city in the world. Where we get textiles for your bathroom today, it came from them. And people, they call it Dutch tiles. The prophet explains that to us in, um, pieces of our history when he goes into that, goes into that. And it's really good to read uh, that, that particular part because it gives you your understanding of the industry that we used to run, right? So um, we, we created textiles and we created paving the roads and lining them with lights that we see and take for granted today, right? And in Spain at that time, you can go miles and the roads are paved and there's lights down the street. And as a matter of fact, we were the first ones to bring in what are called fountains within um, what are called parks today, right? And then at the fountains, then in the parks, right? I'm trying to give you a reference though, right? These beautiful places had, you know, fruit trees everywhere, these, these groves, you know, and um, it was just immaculate, running water, you know, everywhere, right? And um, the Prophet of Ali, you know, brings this um, science back to us 
when he brings us the first holistic health care known to us at that time. OK, and it was uh, the Moorish oil, tea and compound. And he brought the whole industry behind it to give the Moors, right, a means to support themselves and start to look into um, more holistic ways of health to build up that particular industry, which is booming today. I mean, if we would have got it back in 1913 and, and you know, raised the budget, probably said we would have been the most experts back in the pharmaceutical industry that there is. Instead of people walking around taking pills, then two seconds later, your eyeball drop out, you know. So, um, you know, it's very important to study what the prophet did and to see that what we like today, he was one of the founding um, persons uh, the royal prince, you know what I'm saying, to uh, bring these particular things back to us. So let's go back and read this last part here and uh, move on. It says um, also, uh, I think it says destroy the germs of eating cancers. And today that's known as flesh eating disease, uh, scabies, all these weird things that people, you know, that is out there. And it also says uh, gout, rheumatism, lumbar, uh, heart trouble, female diseases, and um, serious affections of the body. Call it once in, call it once in something that I can't read right there. Let me go down a little bit. I uh, still can't read. It says something in chat. And children, and be relieved of your suffering. If you have any something about my treatments, you can be healed before $1 is paid. Wow, in other words, if you have any issues with how I'm saying this, before you pay me, let me heal you. It goes through uh, these divine treatments, there has been great success, um, you know, people being cured, I believe it says right there, and long-standing diseases, which have been in, in two or, oh, which have been cured in two or three days. Also, um, he has the divine instructions and interprets the Bible from Genesis to Revelations. Also, I have the 18 years of Christ's life that is missing in your holy books. All those who something to know the truth about Jesus Christ. OK, so let me come back to you real quick. So um, what we were listening to is that not only did he bring his revelation from the beginning, not only did he tell you when he stepped back into this particular shore, right, with his mission well in hand, you know what I'm saying, his divine dome, right, because they, what they said when he got here, the uh, Europeans were looking for him with dreadnoughts, and, um, you know, they were trying to, and they asked him when he came through customs, where are those books that you're supposed to have, you know, and the prophet said, uh, he told the Moors in the chamber that he had the books in his head, you know, and he dictated, excuse me, he dictated the entire Quran from memory. You know, that not only is an incredible feat, but that's what true and living prophets do. Okay, they, uh, that's what Muhammad did. It's when he was told to read by Gabriel, he had to memorize it. And the reason he was told to read, even though Muhammad could read back then, a lot of people misunderstood that part because he was a wealthy, uh, his family was in the trade and they had contracts back then. He couldn't read the classic Arabic that the um, that was being revealed to him by Gabriel, right? And so that's what he told him to read, read. You can, you know, and um, that's what he was actually, you know, he, had, he brought back an extreme old form, which was the form which was called Kufic, I do believe, an old form, something like that, without the um, vowels. And at that time, Prophet, uh, excuse me, Muhammad, okay, um, was reading Arabic with vowels. And if you go do the um, etymology about Arabic, it didn't have any vowels, just like Hebrew and uh, Aramaic, okay, which are all pretty much very similar. They're, um, they're, they're really all extremely similar, okay? So back to the Prophet Nobu Juali. So he brings us back, you know, our health care. He brings us in 1912, shows up on the scene with the entire cure um, under his belt. And now he's about to un re uh, reveal his divine plan. Okay, so when he got here, you know, what, what was it? 1912, people barely, you know, weren't even 100 years about a slavery. You know, barely was 1865, 
you know, and he got on the scene 1912. Okay, you know, yeah, you know, right? Uh, I'm not quick on that particular type of math. Somebody who was doing the math there, go and put it in there, right? But what we see is the Prophet Noble Juali had the mission, and this is so important to understand this part because he already knew what he was going to do. This is what we were saying before about Marcus Garvey, okay? And if you look at the lecture, I, I spoke on a few things about Garvey, right? And him being the harbinger and him having um, known uh, a few particular people, right? Uh, so at this time, when Prophet Nova Juali was on the scene, Marcus Garvey was just, in 1912, Marcus Garvey was still being a little bit trained about the race his head up. So who was on the scene at this moment, but even... Uh, Marcus Garvey had to come, the main one, to prepare the way for the prophet because he was purity, right? But um, at that time, Prophet Noble Juali in 1912 into in 1913 was in Newark, New Jersey. Marcus Garvey didn't start his until 1916, right? And so there were other people on the scene, as I spoke about um, last lecture, uh, um, who were also sent, you know, not in the divineness of... Um, uh, Garby and Drew Ali, but still in the same order, right? And those particular people are, are Deuce Ali and uh, Suleiman Muhammad. Now, here's a picture of, um, no, that's not it. Here's a picture of Deuce Ali, okay? And um, let me blow that up for you. Okay, check du Brother Deuce Ali. Now, he was on the scene right before the prophet. Okay, now, uh -oh. <laughs> what's going on here? A little hard there, though. All right, All right so, boom, let's do it like that, man. Right. So, what we're looking, wow, what's going on, yeah? I don't think it wants to do it. I don't think he wants to stay. All right, so what we're looking at here is Brother Deuce Ali, right? And as you can see, I like his mustache style, right? But uh, what we're looking at is Brother Deuce Ali. Now, he was a multimillionaire. Brother Deuce Ali, I was, I'm trying to remove that little thing right there. It's kind of pissing me off. Oh, there it goes. All right, so um, Deuce Ali was a multimillionaire, like I was saying. All right, he had a canning factory where he uh, canned. Um, not only was it tuna, but it was a form of a fish back then, uh, um, mackerel or halibut, something to that effect. But it was very successful. He also had a um, a paper in, like I explained before, the La Pignon in um, in in Europe. And this is where, when Marcus Garvey took his trips over to Europe, this is where he met Brother Dusali. Okay, and this brother is the other brother I was speaking about. Um, brother Suleiman Muhammad. Okay, Suleiman Muhammad told he was, oh, a, a little bit about brother Dusa Ali real quick. Um, this brother here was from Saldanese and he was a Saldanese Egyptian adept, as it said in the paper about him when you go do your research. Okay, very important <laughs> because we just spoke about the royal prince. Okay, and he told you where he went and got his divine instructions. And, you know, okay. So now let's look at brother. Um, so remember, he was a Sardinese, uh Egyptian um, adept too, out of, uh, out of the Sardinese area of Egypt, right? All right, so let's look at brother Suleiman. Now, brother Suleiman here. All right, let's look at this. It says, no, remember I told you the other day, right? Um, that uh, Suleiman told everybody, all the Masonic orders, you know, this is when this paper was in September. I do believe we're going to look at it real quick. Let's look at it. Let's see. All right. So September uh, 18th, 1920, I think it was like 1921, right? But this is the New York age, and it says no real Shriners, no real Shriners says Egyptian, right? I'm like, what? You know what I'm saying? Hold on, some brutal hatchets and stuff going on, but let's get over here to Suleiman. All right, and I'm going to blow his picture up a little bit more if I could. Goodness gracious, I don't know. It's not highlighting. All right, can you guys kind of see that? I hope so. 
All right, so if you look at the bra, bra this is Brother Suleiman, right? It says, an Egyptian ex-high priest declares there are no Shriners among the elders uh, uh, oh, of the, either the colored or white Americans, right? Um, asserts as a necessary, the oath coming from Mecca or Alpha or Arabia and something else. In other words, he says, I'm making this, declaring this coming from Mecca and Arabia, right? And it says the, uh, something, oh, Muslim, something swear by the beard of the prophet, okay? <laughs> so what we're looking at is this brother Suleiman, another Egyptian, right? Um, from Saldanese, he was an also when you go do the research, him, he was a Saldanese priest, uh, Egyptian Saldanese priest. He was from Saldanese, he was a high Egyptian um, adept. Okay, so let's move on to. Uh, so when we when we're looking at this right, and when you get the real information, you start to see that. Your father loves you, obviously, because he, he he had to go prepare certain things along the way, right? And this also gets into understanding that prophecy is going to fulfill itself. No matter what one's thinking, what ones want to, um, um, you know, try to get, you know, an understanding of prophecy is going to fulfill itself, right? And we have to know this in our time because the prophet made a couple of um, statements. He said at, uh, um Oh, let's go over here. He said that uh, I'm here for the children and the unborn generations yet, you know, haven't been born yet, and the third and fourth generation. He told these, he said, you here with me, just follow me. And you know how very important that is for us to understand. Because the third and fourth generation that he also spoke about in the prophecies and oral statements, and if you don't have those, please, you know, go to the, big, the bookstore and pick them up. If you're in the class, you get them for free, right? But you need to read those oral statements and prophecies because like I said before, you can't have a prophet without prophecies. And we've had enough time to see, actually see his prophecies come true. And maybe we'll go into that at the end, at the end of, uh, near the end of this lecture, a few of the prophecies, obviously, we were speaking on the prophet Juali. So the next lecture, obviously, is gonna you know, finish off. I don't even know if we're gonna finish off yet with the prophet until we're done. You know, because we have to hammer in exactly what he did. We have to be able to pinpoint it, see it in the historical record, and then go weigh it against the laws so that we, uh, and, you know, like any other intelligent person, so that we know that these things are not somebody just making up some fantasies. And when you delve deep and you begin to really see that the Prophet of Ali did everything, it inspires you. You want to go see, like, how did he do it? Because people can't do it today. But the prophet Juali actually did it for us, you know, and we just have to see that. And it's not dead. It's not gone. And all these particular weird things that people are saying, people are not taking the things that he actually brought and um, listening verbatim and doing exactly what he said. Even if you have to copy everything that he said to the letter of the law and apply, it, you know, so um, let us let us. Uh, Move on here with a uh, with another demonstration. All right. So um, let's look at this right here. This is the next one in order. All right. So what we're looking at. Uh oh, come on. Can you see me? What's going on? So what we're looking at this. Uh oh, there we go. Here we go. So we can blow, but we can blow that one up. All right. All right. So what we're looking at here, if everybody can see that, right, is the mo is probably it's the it is the seventh seal, as we can see, right, spoken about in Revelations, right, and the and the one I showed you the other day, you know. Okay. So when we were speaking about that, now let's let's look at this because the prophet brought this for a specific reason. You know what I mean? And not a lot of people, you know, have looked at this and it says, founded 5-1, 1916. What was founded? Noble Drew Ali, the prophet, is the founder of 
the Moorish divine movement in North America. Then he gives you the ancient sign of the mother. Then he gives you the, one of the most ancient signs of the sun, too. Right? And when you're looking at your constitution here, let me go to you guys real quick. So when you're looking at your constitution, it's the same thing. He gives you the ancient signs here. This also represents the sign. But what you're looking at there is it's so powerful. See, Prophet Nubajuali brought back everything but signs and similar for the conscious mind. So what you're actually seeing is Israel, <laughs> Isis, Ra, yeah. excuse me, Isis, Ra, and uh, when you understand L, we went over the etymology. okay? These are the ancient signs. Now, this particular, you know, and it's very important that we understand that the Prophet Nobu Jawali brought who he tells you who he is, you know, right there at the bottom. Like I keep trying to tell you guys, it says Amen, and it's in quotations, and it has a period right after Prophet Nobu Jawali has a period. And then if you pay very close attention in your Quran questionnaire for Moorish Americans, when it says after the prayer, he puts parentheses around it to tell you about the person who just spoke. So when we're looking at the Prophet Nabu Jawali in the short period of time that he was here, we can see that this man was divinely, divinely paired and is a true prophet, 100% true and living. And he's a Nabi. A Nabi is one who brings a book. You got prophets, minor prophets, and then you got those particular major prophets and major prophets always come with a book. And it's always a part of the mother book, which you can go read about in the great Quran of Muhammad. Okay. And you can also know that this is a part of that that was held back for a specific time. Okay. So let's go back here and uh, finish looking at this. All right. So when we see this crescent moon and this star that the Prophet Nobu Juali brought back for us, and the sisters happen to wear this at the crown of their turban, right? It is so important, you know, the brothers, you know, we wear the seven, you know, and we have on the flip side, it has the crescent moon on it. So what you're seeing again is this, all right? And it's our seal. And when we understand that the crescent moon right here, this is the sign of the prophet, okay? Now, when you understand time frames on our civilization, you'll see that this crescent moon, when it was the opposite, it was, um, no, excuse me, when this crescent moon was turned like this. Hold on, let's see if I can flip it. Uh, oh, look at that, y'all. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, I got a new little thing here. Huh? All right, so anyway, when the crescent moon was like this, Right. It was a time. It was an era. OK. And when it, it was literally an era, we're talking right up out of the last golden age. And then when the crescent moon turned like this, it was also another era. And when it turned like that, it was another era. You, you can see this everywhere. Shriners wear this, you know, thing, you know, even in Louisiana. And when it's like this, bam. And when it turns like this one more time. Bam, it's the completion of the entire cycle, all right, of the 25,000 year span that you just went through. Oh, that's kind of nice. I like that thing too. Everybody yeah, just get it to do what I need to do. Come on. There you go. All right. So, all right. So, what we're looking at here, like I said, oh, come on, bro. All right. All right, so when we're looking at, right, is this age coming in, which is obviously the Aquarian age and the sign of the prophet. What do you mean the sign of the prophet? All right, let me find the sign of the prophet. Ooh. August 21st, 2018. Come on. Come on, big picture. 
this was the great sign that just happened, those eclipse and those blood moons that follow. This is the great sign. This is why people are scrambling, you know, and the world's up in roar because the last part of the last sign came to show that y'all better get it together, you know, because one thing that they could not corrupt is why, why did we put symbols and things in the sign in the sky? Because they couldn't corrupt this moon that was actually placed so perfect that it had to be artificial. But anyway, um, they could not corrupt the stars and the placement of the moon against the sun to give it this particular effect. Okay. And therefore, we knew the 25,000 year cycle of history. And we were able then to calculate and determine certain things. And we then knew too, because we are literally had predictive uh, capabilities of not only machines, but the mind. And we're able to predict 25,000 years into the future. Okay. And um, I know it sounds very fantastic, but look at the pyramids today and look at all the particular things that they can't do. And then look at the science that we really did have. If you study, you know, or organ energy, argon, and all these particular um, forms of energy that this, the brother Tahuti are, as we know in, in our Holy Quran is thought, right, are in the Emerald Tablets. We also, you know, know who he is, right? The, um, he brought back for us, right, these particular signs, right? So I say that, right, to say that the Prophet Noble Jirali put us back on a, on a path that is unlike any other. And in the changing of the moon or the new moon or, or what is known as the sign of the prophet, okay, which is also, you know, right? So, and when we're looking at it, you know, obviously when we're looking at it, you know, going this way, it's that same way. But when you see that right there, okay, it is so important to understand that all things are happening according to prophecy, okay? And they're going to unfold just like the prophet Noble Jirali said, that, excuse me, they're going to unfold. All right, so let's move on with a little bit more details and really see um, some of the great work here, all right? So we're kind of going on the time frame. So what, oh, let's go back to this picture one more time. All right, so the other fantastic, now you can read this in the, um, the student manual, I do believe I put it in the pictures, okay, um, that this sign only, the, this sign showed up, right, in 1925. This is the very year and the same month, um, I think it was um, somewhere in July, somewhere like that, I'm not sure, the month, I do have the picture though, and I have it in the book, but there was a picture uh, taken in a photograph uh, in Washington from the observatory of this particular phenomenon because it's so rare, okay? And this is the year that the prophet declared his, his prophethood. And then they say too, that he met soon to become Woodrow Wilson and they had a meeting and he appeared. And when he appeared, the clouds broke and the, the crescent moon was seen for the first time in ages, okay? I mean, these, you know, if you don't believe that, well, in a year or two, well, you know, it's it's a it's a historical fact. There's nothing to not believe. You can go look into the historical record and go in, in 1925 and see when they shot that particular picture. And then you can look into the historical record of Morse and see that he, he stood up in the year, then he actually had a meeting in Washington. And it's there. But anyway, let us uh let us move on. So that's why. We want to look at the prophet because everything he does is in is in line. All right. So when we're looking at this, we're looking at a new era that's coming in. And this star here, this five pointed star, and some be like, oh, it's pointing down and all this. It doesn't matter what side this particular star points. You don't let these particular wicked dummies, oh, it's the devil, it's the pentagram, and all this old weird stuff. No, dude, you're the you're the only weird one eating rats and doing stuff weird with candles. All right. So. But anyway, when we look at this, right, this five-pointed star represents the child in the womb of the mother. Thus, the sister wears this at the crown. Why at the crown? Because it is the place of the seed, where all seeds start in the crown of, 
of right here. You know, all seeds start right there. And so what needs to happen then? Well, if you go look at like I was showing you before, right, in the turning, these things in the symbols that we have, they're like round, round there and stuff like that. But for the first time, we're back with, oh, here we go. We're back with the particular star all the way raised, all the way up to the top of the crescent. If you go look at the Nation of Islam star, there's the other way and their star is down here. Why? Because he could not raise them up all the way. The prophet, and if you go look at the other particular stars of our people back then, they weren't raised all the way up when they had this one. This particular one is because it means that we, as was Jesus with Elizabeth in the Garden of Shalom being taught in the womb, right? And raised the star child. And the star child was able to be birthed out of the womb with the full, with pretty much the knowledge of self intact. And activation of those divine parts of the DNA. So when he begins to grow and learn, they just unfold. And the teachings then enhance it in his particular family. And then who did that be? That was Jesus, who came to represent perfected man, the first one to stand on the pedestal, the seventh logo of this, you know what I'm saying? That, of that sacred time back then. And this was then put into, you know, stasis for a while until he came back, right? As, ooh. <laughs> until he came back, until Jesus came back as Prophet Nova Jew Ali, right? And, um, right, so when we see the Prophet, right, and we understand that this is Jesus' return 100%. And it correlates when you go read the 18 years that Jesus went into the Egyptian adept to go study. You can even read it in the Bible where it says that he had to, uh, Jesus was called out of Egypt because he had to go there and hide from Hedron or whatever that dude's name is who wanted to kill him. But he, where, did his, where, where, where did he go? He went into Egypt. And then it picks up when he's 30 something. Well, now we have the missing story. We know what happened. OK, so it's very important to understand the parallels that that he's giving you is the road that he took. Then is that he took today for us. OK, and so when we see that sun burst ornament on the top of this crown, meaning a, a fully open third eye. And if you were to count all those of the nation. But anyway, then we see that red turban right here. Prior to when you see the red, you didn't see the sun burst ornament on it because he hadn't. He was just doing his thing. He had to proclaim his prophethood right when he was here. When he was here. OK, you can see that red part and this is going down, but you can see that red part. Right. But this one now. This is when he first began and this is when he declared who he was and everything. Right. And you can see that. Right. You can see that third eye open those two feathers. If I had it on this picture, those feathers to the right side, meaning the indwelling spirit of the Christ. Right. And also means a noble on the Americas, because I'm, I'm going to find another picture for you real quick with the prophet with those um, feathers. OK, here we go. I'm just going to find one by himself. Oh. oh, here we go. OK, so when. Um, all right, let's do it like this. Boom, boom. So when we see, can you? I hope you guys can really see that. You know, I don't know if you guys can see me because I'm hope I'm doing a good job for you. But anyway, so when we see these particular feathers right here, right? And he has two. If you would go look on all of the sculptures of the ones that um I do have them, but I just didn't put them into this particular presentation. But um, if you look at all the old maps about you know who were here. I mean the real old ones. You're going to see brothers with maps and feathers, right? If you go look at England on the, on the sculptures everywhere, they have brothers with feathers, right? And that's the American. Why? Because the America were the Holy Land, like we were explaining before, okay? And Paru, uh, or Peru, which is Jaru Salam, Jaru meaning the people uh, of Salam, meaning the city of peace, are the people of the city of peace. 
Now, when you know that her Ru or Jeru is per Ru, and all they did was change the J and the P, it's like they can always do their little weird things with their English, right? Nothing wrong with it. But you got to get your correlations right. So um, when you go look at those, they always have feathers on, right? So Prophet Noble Juwali brought you back the American empire that's always been here anciently, right, all the way since Cain. Because after Cain killed Abel, he came right over here to the Americas. All right, killed his bruh. All right. Now, you know, stories as their story goes. We got to really dig deep on that story because, you know, these people do a lot of lying. You know what I mean? And the day you allow another person to write your family history and then you don't know what that person is liable to write. You see, they wrote you right out, didn't they? And put themselves right in there. So this is why it's so important that we understand our profit and we take our time to detail, understand exactly what's going on. All right. So let's look at a few more pictures. There was that multicolored sash I was telling everybody about. And those two rings we'll deal with a little later. Right. But if you look up here one day, you know, I'll get the other one out. It says M.A. And then he's covering up the Allah and the seven in the skull. Right. Right there. But down there, there's the elephant. That's why I wear that little pendant. It has a little elephant. <laughs> and then it also says Islam. You can't really see it very good on this picture. But um, my point was to show the, um, the feathers. So let's move on to a little bit more about Drew Ali's wonderful work. All right. So this right here, let's get this one. Now, this is the time I'm trying to keep a time frame going too. So we're about 1916 into the Prophet Noble Drew Ali's prophet uh, demonstration. OK, so and around then, the 1917, 1916, this is where the Hebrew Israelites get their particular, you know, uh, demo from, which they don't want to recognize nor understand, you know, there's some arrogance there. But then again, there's some very good um, brothers there too, right? But this is um, the prophet's demonstration in 1916, okay? Now, I don't know if you can really see that that well, but you can see the sisters here, right? These sisters come from Marcus Garvey's demonstration. Because if you go look, and I'm going to show you in a minute, the Marcus Garvey sisters wore this, and this is what this prophet Drew Ali picked up and told the sisters to put a band on and the button right there in the center. All fit. Now, these are the, what are known as the more Zionist Jews, and they had a temple. This was 1916. Okay, now let me show you something else. This is the other picture of them. Okay, this is the one that everybody knows about, I think. All right. Very, very good picture. Very, very, um, very, very powerful. There it is, right? And you can see some of the European back here. There was even sliding up in there. And that's for a reason. The guys got a peak game. The prophet was a genius. So there he is, the, this Moor who was the rabbi giving you the Moorish greeting, right? Now, what does it say here? It says, I'm gonna blow it up a little more so you can see it. Oh, that's as far as I can go. All right, so I really hope you can see that. It says the Moorish Zionist temple of the Moorish Jews. And it says that in Hebrew. You wanna know what it's, how to say Moorish in Hebrew? There it is right there, y'all. I'm just kind of realizing that myself. <laughs> All right, but here's another fantastic thing. So brother Suleiman Muhammad actually helped him found this. Too. And prior to this founding, though, Prophet Juali co-founded this. He didn't found it. He co-founded it. OK. And um, prior to this in 1912 was the Canaanite temple. All right. And the reason why people didn't understand, why did he co-found that? Why did he do that? You know, oh, he was trying to figure it out. That's why he wasn't no prophet. You know what he was doing. And he was just trying stuff. That's what, you know, the ignorant would say. And I'm like, you guys really are really ignorant. You don't do any adept and um, analytical research. So let's take a good look at this. All right. In the background, you have what is known as Israel's flag today. This, if you get a real good picture and you can blow up more, you'll be able to see. Maybe I can pull that up. You know, yeah, let me see that if I can do that a little bit more for you. No, actually, it won't go up anymore. Okay, so anyway, um, this is Israel's flag, all right? If you get a really clear picture, this is what Israel's flag is today. But the prophet had this flag 
for the more Zionist and the, and the Zionist movement started right after the prophet did these particular things for a reason. And then there's the American flag, right? And then there's the Jewish flag. And the Jews did not get their flag or become a state until 1947. So why is it that they have, here's the prophets, here's the flag with the more Zionist temple of the Moors Jews. And it's the exact same flag that Israel's flying today. Hmm. Let me look at this chat. Hmm. Isn't that strange? Prophet Noble Jewali is a genius. He knows exactly what he's doing, you guys. So, so important in history. Without this piece of history, you don't know why Hitler did what he did. You think he's a madman. We're going to get into that later, but I don't think people are ready for that. I'm, you know, I may touch on that in two years or I could touch on it next year. Maybe people are ready. You know what I mean? You know, uh, I told somebody else about the, uh, this picture right here and they almost flipped and had a conniption and I don't speak about it anymore. Let me show you this. Now, I'm going to show you this because the Prophet Noble Jew Ali and Marcus Garvey both said, well, we're going down to go see the KKK and see what's up. Why you got scared people today don't even want to go over there. Ooh, KKK. Right. But the prophet said he went down there and it's going to look a certain way. But when he go, they're going to show him what going to take him where he wants to go. And then he's going to deliver the particular thing. That's exactly what happened. Now, this. Remember when I was talking about this? I mean, I'm going to hit y'all with just a little bit of ad depth. All right, just a little bit. Remember this? Let me blow it up. Do you see this crescent? It represents a time frame and a certain particular P thing. Now, P game. Uh-oh, did I bring it up already? Oh, here talking. All right, so what you have here is the original outfit of the Ku Klux Klan with a crescent star there. I know I'm scaring some of y'all and I'm probably gonna get death threats. But anyway, you better pick game. You better not be a Negro because uh, they ain't gonna do nothing. And y'all scared of the wrong thing. You need to have a good healthy sense of fear of Allah. <laughs> Why the cake? Why? What's going on? I don't know. The prophet said he went down there and talked to him and told him what's up. Now, I told you who he was. I, I tried to give you these particular names. Let me get off this page because I know it's scaring folks. I don't want to scare nobody. All right, let me move back to this real quick. We'll get back there in a second. I tried to give you an understanding about, you know, who the prophet is. And, you know, like when we were speaking about L, this is that, this is L, this is your defined, this is what L looked like back in the day, y'all. All right. This is L right there. And he's on, the, and, you know, the, the, these ones always want to chip off the gold, but this was all covered in gold. And if you notice, he's wearing what it looks has the appearance of an Egyptian crown. Although, that's the Canaanite god L. 1300 BC. All right? If you want this book, please visit the bookstore. I give this to all I get give you all this so you can understand your history. All right? But look at bro, any sharp with the turned up little toes. You know what I'm saying? Look like you got the garb on like we wear today. And this is the bro that created Oh man. Yeah, I don't want to go there. We already went down that road. And where what where was I? Um, oh, yeah, we were talking about the garb of Garvey and the prophet Drew Ali and the comparison of this, right? I don't need to do that. I think it's already here. All right, so anyway, there's that picture, right? There's L. Let's move to this one. All right, so let's go back here real quick. And now, so you see that European there and you see that when that has the appearance of Europeans. Right, and this dude right here. Now, if you really want to do like, you know, figure out something, go figure out who they are and who maybe their parents were. And then you'll figure out why Rothschild got a fez on and ain't got no tie down number. They ain't got nothing on it, you know. 
Anyway, so you see these particular sisters in their garb, right? Let's go on. All right, Mobutu Ali with the feathers of the royal prince, because that's who he was, the royal prince, the sign of the prophet, right? This is where we were. I wanted to show you that because that time frame, right? And um, But there was one other thing that I really wanted to show you, and I'm not doing myself justice to remember what it, specifically what it was. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're in 1916, okay? And, um, oh yeah, here's L again. We'll do it, uh, we'll come back and visit a few of these pictures before we close out for you guys. So 1916 was very important that year, obviously um, in May, okay? And um, May 1916, a whole lot of stuff happened. The Morse Divine National Movement was founded and all hell broke loose in Europe. This is when the commies came up and did their thing, you know, and started doing their thing. Now, look at Elijah Muhammad here with the crescent moon. All right. Let's look at old Elijah. And they want to know if he was in the Moore Science Temple of America or not. Well, of course he was. Look at the bro with the fez on in the crescent, right? Look at that. Bam, 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 bam. Now, look, look at the way it's turned. All right. Now, later on, that star became real small and it was right there. Now, that's not the same star as the prophet brought, but all these were for a reason they did this. All this stuff is for a reason, you guys. And um, even Elijah Muhammad's demonstration, okay, because prophecy has to unfold and fulfill itself. So let me look at this. Let's, let's look at the prophet. Uh, let, me, let me try to finish this part off real quick before we go here. All right, so you see the sisters in that particular garb, and you see the Moorish Jews, you see the Moorish Zionist Jews, now it's around 1916, and then he went and did um, the Moorish Divine National Movement. Why? Misdirection on a lot of things, too, right? But he was also had to prepare, because it wasn't time yet. Why? Because Marcus Garvey had to step up. So 1916, Marcus Garvey, right? The Harbinger steps up and does his demonstration in 1916, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We're looking at seven years. Yeah, well, yeah, about seven years. I think he started in uh, late 1916, 1917, somewhere around there, right? And um, did his thing. So uh, then the prophet Nubu Juali step, stepped on the scene and was able to, uh, let me answer. Hey, you know, I haven't hit y'all on the chat yet. Hey, blah, blah, blah. What's good? And I can get my thought. Right. So what I'm what I was really getting and trying to show you in that timeline is that what's love? Draw All right. So um, what I was trying to show you with that particular photo, right? Not this one. Uh, hold on. Is the um, let me find this one for you. Then we can move on his timeline and go a little bit faster because my time is getting extremely short. All right, so maybe I should just err uh, up. Oh, here it is right here. Okay. All right. All right, so this is another picture of right. This is, pro this is um, right after 24, 1924, uh, when Marcus Garvey went and had to go into exile and go into the federal penitentiary. All right, now if you notice the uniforms, right, and notice their particular garb and all this, and you wonder, do we did we have uniforms for our guards and protection of our folks, right? And you can see the sisters with their head covered up. Why? Because the prophet and Garvey is giving the sisters their purity back. They're raising them up, putting them in, you know, the proper place. As the mothers and as the mothers of the human family. Okay. So so important that we see um, the brother Garvey and his position with the prophet. So let's move on. This is picture right here is the uh, parade. All right. And uh, I don't know if you can see that that well. I'm gonna try to get it where you can see it a lot better. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, there we go. Come on, thing. Uh, maybe I'm moving too fast or something here. All right. 
He doesn't want to do it for some. Oh, that's me and friend. My bad. All right, so uh, let's go back here. Let's go to this particular picture. I'm trying to get you to this picture real quick. All right. <laughs> ah. Sorry, sorry, buddy. All right, let's go here. Okay. So, um, where is that picture with the sisters? I, I can't find it, so I'm going to move on, okay? And I'll, I'll come back to it. So, um, it's very important, like I said, that we see that Prophet Nobujuali found a lot of things, certain things people won't even understand what he found. All right, and uh, they have a very, very hard time. All right, so when we're looking at that particular picture, this one where we were, understand that he did found this, and then this is where a lot of the Hebrews get their particular understanding. But although he knew that's where he did not want to bring us because he saw what you know certain people were doing, right? So he didn't want to bring us there, although it was utilized for specific reasons. All right, because the royal prince can bring things to the forefront and give permission that other people can utilize it. So what makes him a royal prince and what makes him an emperor? And what makes Prophet Drew Ali these particular things? Okay, and um, this one, before I go there, uh, this is the one where we can see the influence of Prophet Drew Ali on the nation of Islam. All right, so what we have, is the final call, or it says the final call to Islam weekly by Elijah Muhammad, minister of, of Islam in North America. I wonder where he got that. I'm going to show you where he got that. It's okay. All right. It's okay. It's going to be all right. Uh, well, anyway. I will show you. Well, he got that from the uh, the Morse Divine National Movement. Okay. And uh, oh, here it is right here. I'm sorry. Got too many pictures opened up and I just keep opening them up. So um, what we're looking at here is the influence of the Prophet Nobu Juwali and its move into the movement, when it moved to this particular stage in 1934, as we see right here, um, this is when the Prophet Nobu Juali obviously had left the scene in 29, and when, right after they poisoned him, nearly ill. His wife poisoned him and was paid off. Uh, she was not a very nice lady, but was paid off by um, some particular screw, um, downright no good group of people to do that. So when we're looking at the Detroit temple here, right, this was actually the Detroit temple that Wallace Farr, Muhammad was the sheik over, and the brother you see here, Elijah Poo Bay, was a, a assistant sheik over. And you can see all the brothers in the fezes. The reason they put this on the uh, crescent moon was to distinguish themselves from what Kirkman Bay was doing in 1934, and after he uh, killed helped kill Millie Hill, um, what we believe, and um, uh, took over the movement. Elijah Muhammad did not, as the story goes, did not like that. So he tried to distance himself from that particular body, as the story goes, and, you know, do these particular moves, and thus it unfolded into what is known today as the Nation of Islam, okay? And the final call to Islam, you know, um, we can't really say it's a bad thing, but it got bad when he began. He should have said the minister of Islam was perfect. But when he got to saying that he was the messenger, which means, you know, prophet, this is where, you know, a lot of Moors had issues. But when he was the minister, he was great. It was, you know, and I do believe it could have went a lot further. Although I, it, it did its job in the time frame because prophecy has to fulfill itself. The third and fourth generation I wasn't born yet. Right. So certain things had to come. You know, the, the evil spirits weren't let down. You have to prophesy it's going to let down all the evil spirits and let them incarnate. This is what you get today. So you got guys thinking that they men, men women thinking that they, you know, uh, uh, women thinking that they're men, men thinking that they're women, uh, you know, children acting crazy, people eating one another's babies and all this weird stuff. Right. 
So um, it's very important, you know, that we have a book and a guide that we can see and that we can utilize and um, study so and see the path he let was so divine and it was so clearly cut. And the reason why we're um, in the situation we are because of the misdirection. People were paid off to continue to misdirect the entire Moorish movement. I told you in one thing, the prophet so powerful, they, the first nationally syndicated show, in other words, Hollywood's first show they ever did, construction of Hollywood, was to defunct the prophet's demonstration. Go look at Amos and Andy and that whole little thing. They had fezzes on, rocking around, y'all's a balsin and acting all stupid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you still, th you still think they're not trying to fool you today? Well, anyway, it's gotten a little bit more sophisticated. All right, so let's move on to another one here. Um, Dusali showed you a little bit of ad depth on that, uh, the dragon. Oh yeah, that's a part. So the KKK's big dudes called the Grand Dragon. Right, and due to the fact of a victim mentality and the programming of thinking that you black and a Negro, and rightfully so, that you took a stance of really disliking the KKK. And today, I don't really like, like them at all. I mean, but I'm not, I analyze them though, I'm not scared of them. I don't have to like them, but I'm not scared of them. And I'm not playing a victim mentality or a victim role to think that um, I can't, I don't have any power. You know what I mean? So um, when we see that uniform they have on and dude has that, ha that, that particular hat on or that particular, um, oh man, you know, where is it? I don't want to scare you guys or go so far. You know, people are never going to look at the videos and go, oh, you said KKK. All right, but anyway, when we're looking at this, what does that remind you of? And you know, you got to really wake up, you know, Crescent Moon Star. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's a brother under there. Yeah, you thought that, do you thought um, uh, Dave Chappelle was crazy, huh? Anyway. And the Grand Dragon. Hmm. And I wonder what the dragon family thinks about that or the plume serpent or the great dragon, the Nagas of the East, or all these particular things. Too much, too much. I get not too much. I didn't give you too much. You need to wake up. All right, time is short. This stuff is easy. It's nothing. That's not even that depth anymore. Stuff is so beyond what you can even imagine out there. All right, so we need to really wake up. All right, now look at this cat here. This is the false prophet. One of them popped up. All right, now this dude here, well, anyway, this dude here is known, look at bruh. All right, so this is Prophet Noble Ali, reincarnated, founder of the Moore Scientific America, 1934, right after Emil Hill was assassinated. This is Gibbon Zill, okay? And they call him Prophet Ali reincarnated, okay? They have a whole reason why they do that. I, you know, that's their reason. But bruh did keep a lot of the culture. When you go study the whole reincarnated temples and things, they did keep a lot of the culture and a lot of the things where, and a lot of the uh, history, you know, because a whole lot of people left and followed this cat right here. It's like they did Kirkman Bay. The ones that didn't want to go to Kirkman Bay, they went with this dude. All right. Okay, so we have the prophet on the throne. We're still dealing with prophet Nobu Juali. So much. I'm just trying to give you an overall, right? So here we have the prophet on the throne. These particular people were aldermen and judges, not judges, aldermen, state attorneys, you know, bruh here, this cat here, uh, Blackwell, one of the first um, Oscar du Priest, I mean, excuse me. Um, I think he's right here. Uh, no, Oscar du Priest is right here. That's him. Let me blow that up for you one more time. The first uh, Asiatic to be named to Congress is right here during the times of the prophet. All right, so the prophet Noble Juali, when he got to Chicago, these people had, you know, racketeering, they had a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but they, were, they didn't have any organization. 
right? And they really weren't going anywhere until the prophet showed up and gave them the divine plan of the ages, and then they can see what's good. So he organized everybody, right, and started getting their vote. So you see him vote for the alderman, you know, this cat, this cat, you know, Oscar Dupree, vote for uh, Lewis Emerson, the alderman, and all these other ones. Well, Lewis Emerson was the European um, who was going for the governor at that time who wanted the prophet's votes. And the prophet had over 10,000 people in Chicago, and that was a huge vote as a national citizen. And remember, at this time, they weren't really allowing black people to do any type of so-called black people to do any type of voting, right? So when we see, you know, this brother here is very, this brother was, a, uh, I think that was uh, the one picture here with me. But these particular ones were the politicians of the day who wanted the ear of the prophet because he knew that because they knew the prophet Noble Drew Ali had um, had who he was. And he had the ear of the government. Everything was in his favor. You know, and he was building our nation state and getting our things up. I always like this dude's turban. This is Brother Cumbry Bay. He was a grand governor. OK, this is Whitehead, Sister White L. Right. She kind of went flaky on the prophet in the end. You know, and I forget this sister's name, right? But let's move on to another one. Uh, wait a minute. You know what? You guys got any questions in that chat? Who's laughing? <laughs> Praise a lot because I'm, I'm going on. It's kind of going on a little long and I don't want to, you know, go on forever. Right. I just did want to give you um, a little bit of of the history of the prophet. This is the dude that, right here that the prophet used to call to take care of Moorish business. You know what I'm saying? Um, when things got out of hand. Now, this brother here is the hammer. He was called the hammer or Allah El. Okay. Uh, this is the one where the nation of gods and earth, he's the first one to call himself Allah after the prophet did his things where the nation of gods and earth get their particular thing from, right? But this is the dude that laid the hammer to Claude Green, you know what I'm saying, who slept with the prophet's wife. So the prophet called the executioner up in the nation and had him take care of, bruh, pulled that tooth. Now, I don't know if the prophet had him do that. I shouldn't even say that. But this is the dude took it upon himself to lay the hammer to Claude Green, who uh, slept with the prophets. Uh, yeah, you know, I thought that was some good justice for him. I didn't think that was bad at all. But that's a uh, his name is um Johnson, Ira Johnson, Ira Johnson Bay. This picture is a comparison of heads of state. Now, if you know anything about heads of state and signs and symbols, right? Heads of state, when they go to certain other countries or they're being sworn in, always put their hand and they take a picture on the Bible or the Quran in which they were sworn in. Abraham Lincoln swore in on the Quran. I hope y'all know that. That's Quran down there. But anyway, we got Abraham Lincoln here, right? And then you got the prophet when he was in Cuba, Havana, Cuba, representing the Moors. See his hand? See the brother's hand? See him on the square? See the prophet in a, the most, you know, the prophet was sharp, bros. I'm talking the prophet did not look like a bum, y'all, okay? He was clean all the time. And he's got his Egyptian crown one on. All right. So let's go on. All right. So this is the one where the prophet Noble Drew Ali represented the Moors when he went to. People think this is the one when he went to Havana, Cuba. I'm like, no, it's not. He's not wearing a Cuban headdress. That's a Mexican headdress. This is when he went to Mexico in March. 19, 1928, okay? And when he went down to Mexico, all right? And you can see him, you know what I'm saying? Left over, right, doing this thing. You can see the circle seven, which why we wear it. You know what I'm saying? Right there, you can see the pendant with the seven. He has it attached. He has three pins in there. One's a purple one, one's a red one, one's something else. This is our flag. And this is why, because it's a head of state. And if you understand back then, that's how heads of state have to sign in three particular colors. So when he went to go talk to the head of state of Mexico, what happened right after that? He played the competing game. All right. So anyway, I'm going to kind of end a little bit. So I'm going on and on and on. This is the one where I showed you before 
which is the vision John got in Revelations. Okay. When the prophet was sitting on the throne with a little book in his hand, as you can see, it was sealed on both sides. You can see seven seal right there. You know what I mean? So right there is kind of a clear one. Right. And you can see this particular turban is a emperor's turban. Okay. Emperors wore this. And the reason Nobu Jawali is a emperor, because he went to Mexico, let them know what was up. You know, I'm going to finish that on the next one, right? But um, he also had the uh, the Asiatic nations. You see all the migrants coming up. You know, the majority of them are in your Quran. All right, so the reason why it's so important that you do a status correction, we can end here. Because we're speaking on Drew Ali. As we can see, it says Thomas Drew. This is his registration card. All right? Way back in the DZ. What, 1918, before he declared his prophethood, okay? But he was already back in the state. Excuse me, uh, this thing's pinching my back right there, right? So anyway, it says Thomas Drew, right? 1886, January 8th, right? And you can see he signed and everything. He probably did his little signature somewhere around here, right? So um, why is this important? right here, right, Thomas Drew. So why is this important, okay? Because it asks in your Quran questionnaire, where was noble Drew Ali born? In the state of North Carolina, 1886. But we know he was here, Thomas Drew. So what do you mean? Well, what do you gotta go do today? Correct that status. And what do you think he did? Because he was the example, the first one to do it. He was Thomas Drew, and now he's Noble Drew Ali. People need to wake up. And he told you how he did it, where you got to go do it in the state in which you were born. Okay. So uh, the food just showed up, and I'm a little hungry. You know what I'm saying? Let me run through a few of these pictures for y'all. All right. Thank you. And um, this is a very good one. All right, this is, uh, see if y'all can see this. This is Obama, right? When he was on somebody's show in 2012. It says, uh, back in public, Barack Obama loud. Oh, it says, uh, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud, right? And Obama commented and said, he said, not me. So Joyner said something. What do you mean, Barack? He says, uh, Joiner on uh, something Joiner's morning show and greeted him by saying, It's out first. Oh, it's our first black president of the United States. Barack Obama says, uh, Tom, I don't look at myself as the first black president because the word black has no standing in law. Okay, you can go find that quote on the Tom Joiner show. All right. This is me at a nice little party in Malibu garbed up with some beautiful. Oh, that's that's Kalena. And uh, had a, you know, at some party. All right. This is the sisters in the Marcus Garvey parade. Sisters need to take point. Check them out. Today you would have that, you know, turban on or this on. You know what I'm saying? With the little button. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Let's move on to this. Uh, Okay, this is a Mexican brother. Look at this, y'all. Why did the prophet go down to Mexico? Because this was the brothers in the Mexican army. Didn't know that part, did you? Guess who that in that bra? It's a Mexican bra. Uh -huh. You wonder why the prophet went down there? Because Mexican means more. So there's a Morse American scholar, please pick it up, 2012 edition of The Prophet, all right? Um, this is me and Brother P uh, Pimento Bay. This is the one who helped write this book. You guys ever seen this book? Okay, all right, that's the Moors, uh, the, uh, the Golden Age of the Moors. Please go pick it up by Ivan Van Sertima. And it has a part in here by the opening by the brother who I just showed you, 
Jose V. Pimente Bear. Where is it? Somewhere. There it is right there. You see him? All right. So that's that model. And I show you that because I don't know why I'm showing you that. What am I showing you that for? Oh, I was moving through the pictures really quick. Let's choose one here. Okay, so I want to get you guys this last little part and then um, we can end. All right, so, oh, here's a good piece. All right, so we were dealing with Bay and L last week and the week before. Okay, so. The prophet also brought us back our ancient forefathers' divine national creed. This is what they look like. The Anunnaki are the Elohim and the Nephilim. The Elohim meaning those who created everything that ever was and ever more to be, right? As we see, they're also known as the watchers, right? This is the blood and the fez, and this is the one who was in what is known as the underworld, Nigar, Nigal, right? Uh, Nirval, right? And he carried the Nagas, or the symbol of Inki, his brother, right? And he was one of the ones controlling one of the facilities of genetic um, splicing to get the Lulua Mello, which is the primitive being of the planet, cracking. These are the mother goddesses. This is Ishtar, okay, or Isis, and that is her symbol. Here you go. See this? Damn. All right. There is Allah or Allah. Allahu, where we said that here in the Americas are the great father, the Indians used to say, the great grandfather, and there's the son, right? And when we go back here, oh man, come on, it's like, oh, you know, it's so hard to pick it up. I need to get a much better method. Oh, here we go, guys. All right, so anyway, um, when you see this particular picture, okay, you're looking at the ones who came off of Nibiru, all right? And they splashed down, like I was telling you, this is Inky. This is the one who fashioned, who made you. E, Enlil is his brother, right? The commander of the heavens. This is Ishtar, our Isis, Ninti, our mama. We call it, another name of Ninti is, ma, is mama. Mammy or straight up, you know, that was her name, you know what I mean? So when you're looking at your ancient forefathers, trust and believe me, you know, they look like this than they do anything else. And pretty much put, you can bet your bottom dollar. All right, and we'll go deeper into that maybe later on. All right, that's me teaching a few more a couple years ago. Uh, and we're going to end right here, right? Um, where is that? This is Prophet Noble Juwali's manif uh, shipping manifest coming back from the Cuba. Uh, 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 a lot of people have never seen this. So let me show this. This is the shipping manifest coming back from Havana, Cuba, when he went to go represent the Moors in um, 1928, all right? And Charles Kirkman Bay went with him. So what we have here is Havana, Cuba, selling from Havana, Cuba, January 25th, 1928, which is the, the uh, sixth annual convention of the American states. It's a treaty that we're under. Hey, oh, let's go use the ancient treaty. Man, I'm an ancient old oh, things. No, nah, bro, we got a treaty right here, right now. Why? Because there he is. Ali, Drew, Bay, Charles Kirkman, right? And it's on the Northern, it's on the SS Northern, Selling from, from Havana, Cuba. It's coming back to America. Okay. And, you know, gives dates and all that. And, you know, January 8th, you know what I'm saying? And uh, some other great stuff. Right. So, this shipping manifest is kind of deep when you analyze it. You know, it's very deep. All right. And you kind of compare it to everything. Now, this is in Mecca. When you go to Mecca, uh, there, they all make the circuit around the Kaaba, and then they begin to pray. The only one who's not praying is the leader of the prayer, and he's the he's the Mo in the Fez because he's in his house. That's why he's wearing that Fez because that, that house where he's at means the house of Bay, the Kaaba, 
Ba, remember? Ka, ba. Ka, meaning house. Ba, meaning bay. Or B-E, or bow, where they got ba, right? Or ra. We went through that a couple of weeks ago. All right, so I said I was going to end. So I am. Um, and I will pick back up. Right? So this is one of my, my favorite Jedis. Y'all can peep him out. You know what I'm saying? Peep out old, old, old homie here. He's a Jedi master. So smoke on that. Think about what we just went over. And, uh, <laughs> okay, you got some questions here. It's love. Bad connection. You keep streaming in and can't keep up with what you're saying. Missing a lot. Oh, sis, wow. Are you kidding me? Or were you or were you guys able to see any of the um the pictures I put out? Could somebody put a one in there if you saw the pictures? Okay. Mr. Hood says stream was good for you. Okay, Islam. Mo. Okay, yes, one. Okay, pre okay, Islam. Praise Allah. Okay, so there was a, uh, I was going to read some from our manual here, but you guys, I ran uh, overtime, and um, I do have a lot more uh, pictures. I'm going to do a lot better job and, and be able to share my screen with you, so that way everyone can hear and everyone can see it, because there's a lot more. I mean a lot more. I haven't connected the entire uh, why Hitler was the only one to listen and to bring everybody back under his own mind and victory, right? And then a whole lot of stuff that connects with that. There's a lot of stuff that connects with the, um, you know, where I was showing you, we'll go back into Bay L again. But Prophet Ju Ali was the topic of the conversation. I'm going to end with this because I said he was an emperor. Why is Prophet Ju Ali an emperor? Well, this is a this is an empirical constitution. This is why a lot of people have a hard time understanding it. It says this organization of the more scientific is not to call to confusion or to overthrow the laws and the constitution of the said government, but to obey hereby. A lot of people believe that said government is the United States of America. It's not. It's the said government. He just told you about the more scientific of America. And he's talking to all of the kingdoms or the branches and the district temples or the subordinate temples that were formed under there and then have the ability to create all the way up to a kingdom. This is why I told you about Algiers in, in the beginning of the Quran. This is why I gave you chapter 45 and named all the nations because they're all up under the new empire. That's why I told you that you are in the current Moroccan empire in chapter 47. Okay. We have to really wake up and get to our responsibility by first and foremost doing what he tells us to do, proclaiming our free national name and the government in which we live in the nations of the earth. OK, that is vital that you do that. Now, I gave out instructions to everybody um, this last week. If you have any questions, please call me up. But that is how it's going to go. Um, I encourage you, you know, stand, start picking up some of the things now. Like one piece on there said that your option of getting the genealogy certificate, it is an option. Although um, when you see it, you're going to want it because, you know, you're an internationally protected person. Next week, we'll be into nationality and I'll be explaining all that. And being an internationally protected person, you protect you immediately and your immediate household. So what I've done, what I've done is create the genealogy report with the tree and your explanation of your immediate household. That needs to go directly into the State Department so that your immediate household is now known by you, so that they understand who you are. In case of emergency, you have to come and go get it. All right. And we're going to go into detail of the laws on all of that in a couple of weeks. But so please look at all those documents. At, please call me up with any particular questions. And once again, I hope I said something to keep you on the path. And I hope I've enlightened you to a little bit more better uh, understanding of the Prophet Juali um, and all those ones that came to uh, lay out the road, especially uh, Marcus Garvey. Uh, Deuce Ali, Suleiman Muhammad, we're even going to get deeper into them, you know, if you want, okay? They do a lot of hiding. I don't do a, I do not do the hiding because that's not the real adept stuff, you know I mean? If you really understand, that's not, you know, and um, these are the, this is the divine history that came that we all need to understand so we can have value of our prophet and we can love them and then we can get on to ruling our part of the world, bring back some beautiful civilization 
and get some flying cars around here because I'm sick of traffic. So I don't want to get some flying cars with me, y'all. Pop said we're real good. It's the air age, and we can we can rule the air and everything in it, right? So think about it. Um, please proclaim your nationality. I will be back down in Los Angeles somewhere after the seventh, and um, I'll, I'll be there. So please, let's all get together and uh, enjoy each other's company, all right? And do the things necessary to make men and women better, men and women better citizens. I love each and every one of you. Islamism, put a one up there. You know what I'm saying? We know what this means. It means we love Allah and we are uh, up under the one God and the one truth, one God, one aim, one nation, one prophet, one temple. Islam is the one house of Ali. Okay, y'all want to play a little um, music, right? So if y'all missed what I played earlier, we're going to do that again because um, people got a misunderstanding. Yeah, no, no, man. Of uh, for what things are. This people who I played earlier too, uh, uh, fifteen minutes prior to, or five minutes prior to all that, we do what is known as a uh, pre-show. Uh, the people I played earlier was known as the Watts Poets. Please go peep them out, man. They like on target. You know what I mean? On target, and we need some more beautiful music like that. You know, so you guys step it up, bring us something beautiful and um, let us enjoy that. So this one's called Pimp. Check him out. It's talking about the black man. Mm. Right. All 20 young hip brothers dig me. I'm their symbol. I'm real. I'm going to take it back. With me, all 20 young hip brothers dig me. I'm a black man. A pimp. Our swinging young hip brothers did. I'm their symbol. Mm-hmm. I'm real. It's been a little tiring today, y'all. And associated. You see, I came from those same shabby shacks with those same fucking rags on my back. But growing up in a world of dog feet, dog, I learned the dirtiest dog got the bone. Me and not the dog with the loudest bark, but the dog with the coldest heart. Oh. I became the North Pole. Cold, 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 cold. My blood is like ice water in my veins. It's blue. No. Like white men do. On the white men, pimp nipples and lane. Did you hear him? Well, I got the idea for the game. Did you oh, hear him? So that's what it is. But not that lame shit like the white boys play because once I started playing the game, I improved it right away. You see, I wear a hundred dollar front, a two hundred dollar slide, and a hog is the only thing in which I ride. And niggas can't get that way to ride. I have two to three grams in my pocket every day. Hoes, though cocaine is the name of the game I play. But you know, folks tell me that if I applied my ability in another way, ain't no telling where I would be today. Because I'm so damn keen. Fake girls melt like good when they look into the free tan face of mine. Black girls, well, they know I'm fine. Keen and mean and don't give a damn. But I know the truth. If I had a master's, I wouldn't be a damn bit brother. I'll just be fooling myself and selling out my brother. Mm. I'll still be unhappy because I'm black. 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 I want freedom, freedom, freedom now. Now. So you want freedom. freedom. You want freedom from being black. A time bomb destined to explode. He said he a black man, a time bomb destined to explode. Listen to him, y'all. Listen to him. But you can't tell where I'm coming from. And the next time it's still a buying a Cadillac, I'm going to buy myself a gun. A gun! Come on. Smash that like button. Oh, the key to success. He better be sure to make a wild game. Oh. He knows how to love. He knows how to he knows how to He knows just where 
I wish I was rich class nigga. <laughs> Honey, there's a difference between a black man and a nigga. Sure. I'm a black man. A pimp. All a swing of young hip brothers in. Stop being black. I'm their symbol. I'm real. Come back into your girl self. And associate. Next week, we're going to be on Google see, Chat too. Shabby, shabby, shabby. So that way you can Those see yourself on Google red, Chat. So, I mean, everybody go get that Google uh, dog, dog dog on Google the Hangouts. If y'all already should have it, we're going to go live on Google Hangouts so you can see yourself and I can do other particular things to share my screen. So that's it, y'all. He said his blood is like ice water. I'm going to let this thing fade. I take home money and feel no pain. No. Like white men do. All the white men feel niggas and rain. Oh, he said all the white men feel niggas. That's cool. He got That's the, the idea for the camera. But not that lame shit like the white boys play because once I start playing the game, I improve. Anyway, I love each and every one of y'all, right? So please go love somebody, tell somebody that you love them, hug them, you know what I mean? And uh, enjoy the rest of your time in the now. And always study the prophet and praise Allah every chance you get. Islam is, we're going to pray out right now. So everybody stand inside a benediction while I pray inside. Allah, bind our heart and mind back to our ancient forefathers, divine creating principles. This we ask in thy holy name in the seven Elohim. I mean, Islam, y'all. Peace.